There is this old saying that goes, beware that when fighting monsters, you yourself do not become a monster, for when you gaze long into the abyss, the abyss gazes back into you. And I guess there is some truth to this because apparently this guy fell victim to becoming a monster himself. But to be fair, how could you not gaze into the abyss when it's running around looking like this? I mean, it's adorable. But anyway, let's start the show. What's up ladies, gentlemen, everything in between and on the outskirts. Welcome to Kazar Anime, while I will attempt to give my thoughts and review this type of manner on anime that either I've been watching or recommended by people for me to take a look at. Today we're going to be looking at something that was recommended by the homie Hayate Kojiro. The name of it is called Chainsaw Man, which is an anime adaptation of the manga created by Tatsuki Fujimoto. And it's produced through Studio Mappa, who has really been on the road by having their hand in some of the heavy hitters, arguably staples within this modern era of anime, depending on who you ask. With shows like Jujutsu Kaisen and of course Attack on Titan with many other titles, movies, and anime series coming down the pipeline. So in the world of Chainsaw Man, exist these demons where people will hire demon slayers to come in and obviously get rid of them for money. The existence of demons is seemingly something humanity just accepted as a normality, but the coexistence between the two gave birth to agreements between humans and devils known as contracts, which just means that if one should use the power of a demon, one must offer a payment in some shape or form. Like anybody that makes deals with a demon, it normally doesn't work well within the favor of the human. But hey, people have free will, so it is what it is. Sometimes special circumstances between humans can have unique results though. So this is where the main character Denji comes into play. Instead of being considered an actual human being amongst his peers, he is nothing but a living piece of property that is unfairly thrown into situations. The way this anime opens up already makes it clear to the audience that this guy's life has already been involuntarily screwed over by the people who are supposed to make his life way better. In other words, his parents. One remarkable aspect about this character's personality is his consistency consistency to remain somewhat positive about the bleak circumstances he faces. And really, life hasn't necessarily been kind to the guy. I mean, it's to the point where some of his greatest aspirations and goals consist of him just simply having the opportunity to be with a woman, and actually eat bread with jelly. But to help clear off his debt and alleviate his loneliness is his trusty friend and companion Pochita, who is this cute little puppy thing with a chainsaw for a nose. This little demon is Denji's weapon for doing his odd jobs until one day the people whom he works for sends him out on a job which will turn Denji from this to this. After a certain event occurs, he is then brought into the fold of this organization known as Public Safety. Here, Denji is introduced to a team of demon slayers whose mission is to at least within this first season is focused on destroying this demon known as the Gun Devil. Throughout the season of the show dives deep into the people that Denji will grow close to. There is one particular character that has my interest though, and her name is Makuma. She is the woman that finds Denji and isn't necessarily normal to say the least. She is quite mysterious seeing as though her intentions are always ambiguous. What she has up her sleeve is always shrouded in mystery to a certain extent, however she oversees Denji's life and her subordinates. It would appear that Makuma is Denji's love interest and that Makuma is taking a liking to him, why she has such an interest within Denji is up for debate. But if you eat the manga, <laughs> If you know, you know. Next up is Power, a demon who utilized blood to create and destroy demons. Ladylike modesty and conventional manners is nowhere within her vocabulary, let alone her character. Once her background was expounded upon, she became lovable, and you can always expect for her to be one of the people that is always getting into something, especially trouble. Aki Hayakawa is kind of like the leader of the team appointed by Makuma. He is the most level-headed, realistic, and has motivations to destroy the devil that set him on a path filled with pain and loss. This only perpetually strengthened his conviction to accomplishing a certain goal by any means necessary. The rest of the supporting cast are good and helps contribute to the growth and maturity of the main characters, but for the most part, it'll be these four that drives the show forward. Chainsaw Man is not one of those types of anime where there is a strong defining line between good and evil, or having the power of friendship to overcome struggles and all that jazz. This show reminds the viewer of the grim and unforgivable reality what these characters find themselves in. People will die. Nobody is promised to live through their assignments. Every dead person is a part of this organization and synonymous 
comments with increasing the probability that you may lose your life, a limb, or find yourself in a more harsher circumstance as the consequences of choices. Being a member of public safety is quite unfortunate because it may contribute to such unwanted outcomes. However, as the viewer, it's these conditions that made me grow closer to these characters, especially in times where there's not that much action going on, but simply just watching them goofing around doing normal things that may seem boring or just talking to each other. It's from these conversations that you come to the realization that most, if not all characters are tragic and have something seriously screwed up with them. But besides all the death and destruction, watching Denji's sorry excuse of a love life, with the exception of one scenario, is kind of a nice little plot threat to follow. His thing for Makuma is rather relatable to most guys that has a crush. But again, Makuma strikes me as somebody that is more mature and experienced in dealing with situations, which does not necessarily mean she is the type of person that you would want to try to pursue. Coming up on the back end of the first season when I saw her do this one thing to obliterate her targets made my mouth drop to the floor. Like if you saw Death Note, you might be familiar with Kira and his ideology of getting rid of bad people for the betterment of mankind. Well, she kinda pulls a death note in the most brutal way, but even worse. Kira had to at least do research on bad people to utilize them, but she just had them brought to her like it was a normal everyday thing. I'm sorry, but this is just something that I couldn't just simply brush over. Makuma does what she has to do, but because of this, it makes her extremely dangerous. The only other person that hinted at this was this badass named Kashibe, and this guy is a piece of work. And for the fans of the manga that already knows what's ahead for Denji, <laughs> if you know, you know. It's almost as if the guy can't never catch a break. As far as the music goes, the original soundtrack was composed by Kensuke Ushios, who's also worked on other anime such as Devilman Crybaby, Boogie Pop and others, and also Space Dandy. Besides these projects, he's also released a couple of albums and EPs. You can go ahead and check those out for yourself. The link will be in the description below. But within Chainsaw Man's soundtrack, things can go from straight up rock, to electric grudge, to experimental, to funk, and then to avant-garde ambient. It's definitely something that maybe the listener will have to have a certain taste in music and be open minded to appreciate, let alone enjoy. All of the music is broken down into multiple EPs which covers a number of episodes I believe that are featured in. There are three EPs in total, but they all can be put together for the complete edition that has every song from all the EPs, not to mention has this awesome artwork which appears to be an engine with a chainsaw thrown in there. And to be honest, this cover alone can pass off as being the live action representation of the man MC of the show, because when he goes off within chainsaw man mode, he sounds just like how this cover would probably depict him. Alright, as far as the visuals go, it has some of the most cleanest I've seen yet. You practically see this anime really has some backing behind it because you see the substantial budget looks like it's been put to good use. But I really cannot be surprised though. This is MAPPA, and they don't let their animators go home for nothing. Guess what? We just picked up all the fun fancies in three! Oh, come on guys, what was that in two? Hey, how's the 5,000 friends going? Dang it, hey. Of course you're going, you're going to have a good time. Hey, guess what? Guess what? We just I mean, looking at what MAPPA has in store for us, we can actually see that that may be a fact. But anyway, the visceral fight scenes when you see Denji cut loose is nothing short of disturbing and awesome. Seeing him go into beast mode and just start wrecking things and seeing flesh and blood being torn apart and flying everywhere due to his chainsaw is very detailed, violent, and gory. Imagine a chainsaw being inserted into a being, sometimes slowly as the demon is screaming in agony behind a loud motor revving up on high speed with revolving blades tearing into flesh and bone. Yeah, that sounds violent. <laughs> But again, it's kinda awesome. Expect to see much of that here. I don't know if it was from an Instagram account, but I remember seeing this video somebody did showcasing major pop culture references within the Chainsaw Man's opening. Then doing my viewing of Chainsaw Man, there was some scenes that blended 3D rendering into 2D landscape. This made things a tad bit better in my honest opinion, and some friends could have easily made an awesome wallpaper. Looking at the designs of some of the demons that were shown, to me makes up for the less than stellar names. For example, of course you have Chainsaw Man, then you have the Zombie Devil, then you have the Power Devil, which I honestly believe should have been named the Blood Devil, and I'm sure there are going to be many other devils and demons that live up to their generic and self-titled names. 
But to me, it's just simply how they're portrayed that makes them authentic in my opinion. Also, I remember when I saw Denji smiled, I somewhat knew that I was going to like this show. Why you wonder? Well, just look at his teeth. Protagonists of many anime who show signs of being unhinged, crazy, but for a good reason, always rock the shark teeth. If you're looking for an anime filled with action, looks good, and for the most part cuts straight to the chase with what it's about, I recommend you looking at Chainsaw Man. One of the important messages that I got from this season is the fact that a person doesn't need an overly complicated reason or purpose to motivate them. Of course, people have their own goals that they wish to achieve, but you don't have to be the most trained or be considered by others as a must-have prerequisite to pull off feats your contemporaries could not. Now, I'm not saying that one should ignore proper instructions or methods of becoming more proficient within their capabilities, because if Denji did this, he'll be dead along with everybody else that he cares about. You see, within the world of Chainsaw Man, destroying demons and imps is one thing, but taking down the actual devil is a whole different ball game. The second thing this anime speaks on is loss. I would say majority, if not all characters have or are suffering from the loss of something or someone. Some of these characters' responses to such losses manifest itself within the exhibition of his dreams, taken to ensure that the newfound purpose is fulfilled. You throw all this, PTSD situations, and demons into the pot, and you have the recipe for insanity and sadness, which makes this show a tad bit entertaining. Now, I know that sounds a bit evil to say, but how else can a show have some substance without a little bit of conflict, especially if it's existential? But anyway, you can view this anime now via Crunchyroll subscribe. Links will be in the description below if you want to check it out. And remember, cherish the people around you and guard your heart, fellas. Denji, I'm looking at you. If this anime continues in which all signs point to a definitive yes, considering the phenomenon this series has become, you'll understand in due time what I mean. Until then, peace.